My name is Doug Argue. I'm an artist that lives in New York, and I have a studio at Mana. <laughs> yeah, the paintings I'm just finishing up now are for a show in Venice that's sponsored by a group Save Venice. My paintings are inspired by Venetian paintings and the space that they're going in. People who don't know Venetian paintings, they made big oil paintings that were sort of based on light. And so the idea of light, that comes through Venice. For the three paintings that I'm putting in the show, what sort of binds them together is one is water, one is brick and land, and the other is sky. Walking through an, a narrow alley, which they call Calais, and um, red bricks on both sides, like this far apart, but beautiful red bricks, which, you know, you have, there's tubes of paint called Venetian red, and it really is a real color around Venice. And so I had the idea of painting a brick wall with that Venetian red, but then having letters just gently floating down in front and the basic feeling I wanted from that was that um, of time passing, of time changing, of things moving from one time to another. It's a, an emotional feeling rather than something that's easily explained. Um, the text itself though comes from Italy, even though you can't read it, it's broken into its, what I call atomized, it's broken down into its, into letters. So the long night sky painting, if you're in the Calais and you have the tight walls against you, and then you look up and you have the feeling of the sky and that kind of openness that you get. It also has lots of letters, but they're very, very small. And they're also atomized. You know, to me, it's, it's a reflection on the miracle of language and where does it come from. You don't get content. You're not born with the content of the language. You're born with the ability to use a language. To me, that idea of atomizing the text into the sounds brings it back to that sort of beginning of, you know, making a language out of an incredible combination of sounds that we were able to make. In all of these, I'm making, in the end, I'm making a painting, so I try and pull it all together as an interesting painting. All of these paintings are being shown during the Venice Biennale in a palazzo near the Academia where the best Titian and Tintoretto paintings are. So, you know, there's a competition in my own mind to not completely fall on my face. <laughs> In the water piece, which you have to have for Venice, I painted um, Titian's last painting, which is his Pieta, and then I painted the water over the top. And of course, Titian and his ideas about painting and light, you know, really influenced people like Turner, who influenced Impressionists, who influenced Expressionists. Well, I turned it upside down, and then I painted the water over the top, so it looks a little bit like a reflection. Not everybody's going to see it underneath, but there's a, there's a mystery in history about how one thing leads to another. When you look at it, I think you can feel something underneath, but maybe it's a bit mysterious to you. I think the main thing that drives my work is the pleasure in making it. I remember drawings I did in third grade, and I just never stopped. I never really made a decision. I just kept doing it. And, have been lucky enough where nothing has stopped me yet. <laughs> it's much more to me about the personality of the works. Always the attention to, to detail to the point where I lose track of where I am and what I'm doing and that kind of joy. I think even if the pictures aren't the same, that source of life from them is, is the same thing that keeps me going.